a few people got to experience. And uh, by reason of that fact, there were a lot of people that were more or less ignorant to what was really going on. And I was thinking about today on Sunday school, Brother Matt was teaching. There are a lot of people that feel like what you don't know won't hurt you. They tell me that, I've had them over and over tell me that if you don't know no better, God don't expect no better. Well, no. When he left us his commandments, one of them was is to study. To show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, in saying that, I want to say this. This word tells me the same thing it tells you and everybody else. <clears throat> this word is light. The light shineth in darkness and the uh, darkness comprehended it not. Why? Because their deeds are evil. So there are people today that are living in sin and they enjoying their life. There are a lot of good people out there that will give you the shirt off their back. But when it all comes down to the nitty gritty, they're not ready to meet God. The, the scriptures are said in St. John 3 and 5 tells us that except you be born again of the water and the spirit, you shall in no wise see the kingdom of God. Now, if you're not born of the spirit, then you're not going to be able to see the spiritual side of nothing. We've got so many people today that uh, talk about if I could see a miracle, I would believe. The world has an old uh, adage that they say the best place to hide something is in plain sight. Praise the Lord. Just put it right there so obvious to people look over it. Well, Proverbs said, how long are you simple ones you you love simplicity? It's just a simple fact that God made the heavens and the earth. And we know that God is the giver of every perfect and good gift. Now, whenever we think about the scriptures, and I want to turn tonight to the book of Luke, in the 10th chapter. I want to read uh, two or three verses there. Praise the Lord, Luke, the 10th chapter, and begin reading with the uh, 17th verse. And uh, we view the, our relationship with God is it's, he's got to conform to our opinion and to our way of thought. But that can never be. He'll never do that. So tonight we have got to be transformed by the renewing our, our mind. Why? Because his word is forever settled in heaven. He's not going to change your, his mind. So we might as well make up our mind to conform to His Word of God. Now, if we will think about it for a minute, we're both a natural or a human being. We're also a spiritual being. We were, the subject come up in Sunday school this morning about, you know, uh, about the fact that we're... Um, heavenly beings in as much as we're going to spend eternity somewhere. Now, because we are eternal and because that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun, we need to take heed lest we let the Word of God slip, get, get away from us. 
So, whenever we think about the Word of God, we want to think about it in a realistic and true way. The Bible said that which is spirit is spirit, and that which is flesh is flesh. Now, I'm going to be uh, touching on some things, and I want you to think about what I'm saying before you cast it aside. I do not trust conspiracy theories. I was talking last Sunday night about some of the things that was going on and how we got people up as one of our Congress ladies that's 84 years old and she's got dementia and she's asking the same questions over and over again. Well, God bless her heart, that's something she can't help. She didn't go ask for it, it just come to her. It's like growing older, I, I realize the older I get, the less I can do. But, irrelevant to her mental status, God is not gonna change his mind because her mind is wrong. Now, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't know, it just it just makes me mad. Every time I think about when they get up there and they have all the protests and stuff and they talk about uh, it is my body, I have a right to choose. Well, now I agree with that 100%. You have a right to choose not to get pregnant but you don't have the right to abort that baby once it's conceived. And I got scripture for that. He said, boy, and again, would you shed innocent blood? Now, and saying that, it's a whole lot of other things that, to be considered when we think about the Word of God. Now, I mentioned the word conspiracy theory did you know most people will read the Bible and it'd be in black and white or in red, whatever. And after they read it, they're so carnal-minded, they're not willing to accept what the Word of God actually said. Praise the Lord. So, when we talk about the devil, he's not a coins, uh, Owen Coins, Pink Panther, it's got a long tail and a pitchfork in his hand. When we talk about heaven, we're not talking about just an ordinary place. We're talking about a place where Paul said that it is not in our heart or our mind how great it's going to be. He said he's seen things that could not be uttered. But what did he see it at? In the third heavens. Well, there's a lot of debate about where the third heavens is, but I really don't care where the third heavens is. That's not the issue. When the scripture said to make your calling and election sure, all I know for sure is, is I want to be there wherever it's at. So there's some things that are more important than others. So. I want to I'll read this scripture here for my in the book of Luke, the fifth chapter, the seventeenth verse. Setting the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through thy name. And he said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Praise the Lord. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Now, where did he say he's seen Satan as lightning come from? Praise the Lord. Now, 
city fell or fall from heaven. Isaiah went more into detail and talked about the fact that he was cast out of heaven. And uh, he was an archangel. And from what I understand, he was a, over the music and the worship or whatever. And uh, he was next to the Lord himself. But there again, those three little things got involved. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Now the pride of life will get you in trouble. About every time we start to do something with this church, I'll be honest with you, we start to make changes and stuff. About the time we get started, there's something happened to me. Everything from A to Z, my back would go out on me, have a heart surgery, got where I couldn't stand up and walk. Um, a continuous one thing, my throat got sore and, and it began to give me trouble. It was Wednesday before I could talk hardly. And uh, I guess if you were Sister Christy, you'd be proud. But the thing of the matter is, is the Lord brought me a scripture about the Apostle Paul. He said that he would not deliver him. He asked him three times and he said, I won't heal your body or whatever it was. He said, because I'm going to leave that there where that you won't get lifted up in pride. So the Lord let me know that the reason things happened like they did I hear people talk about the church Ray built. Ray ain't built a church. The Lord let me know that when it got started and when it was finished, it was all about Him. I don't have no right to get exalted in myself. The Bible said it is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. Now, I want to bring to your attention where it was the Satan came to as a lightning. He came to the earth. You know what? We, we treat the spiritual world as, as some kind of carnal thing. If we're not careful, we get people thinking that what we are is a bunch of religious fanatics that go to the extreme. I am not an extremist. I am a realist. And if it's real, I want it. You know, I didn't know nothing about the Holy Ghost until I experienced it for myself. No wonder the Bible said to taste to see if it be good. So, when Satan was cast out of heaven, now he didn't leave on his own. But he was cast to earth. Before there was a man, before there was a woman, before there was the waters separated, and none of that ever took place, Satan was cast to the earth. But it said that in the beginning the earth was void and without form, and the Spirit moved over the face of the deep. The earth was already here. I don't know how long. But then the Lord began to do his work of creation. And I want you to think about this just for a minute. Did you know the Lord made all of this, as great as it is, for us, for me and you? Now you think about that. What's wrong with all of this? Ah, uh, we can't comprehend how great heaven's going to be. No more than we can comprehend the reality of the Spirit. God is a Spirit. Yes. Praise the Lord. And it said David worship and must worship Him in Spirit and in truth. Amen. So in saying that, it's important that we recognize 
that there is such a thing as a spiritual world. Now, Satan himself is a spirit. God is a spirit. You and I have a spirit. Now, Satan is already doomed and he knows that. But the reason he was removed from heaven was he wanted to exalt himself above God and become God, which he couldn't do that. So the Lord cast him out. But whenever we think about where he was at, he was there on earth. But we got to think about it this way also. That when he was cast out, the Lord didn't just only put him out. He put a third of the host of heaven. Now, I don't know how many was there. That's not even, I don't consider that. Because I know that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Now, who is the he that's in the world? Satan using the same old tricks that he used in the garden today. And it's working still well. Now, these uh, people that's out there and they, and they want to, and, and they read over scriptures and don't pay attention when it's time to tell them. Now, if Isaiah 7 and 14 is right, and it is, so is Matthew 1, 21 to 23, said a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a child. Now when we read that, we think about her getting pregnant. And I don't want to get vulgar tonight because there's nothing in this word that's vulgar. It was all written for our admonition or for our understanding. So when the Bible said that she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost, she was not conceived of a natural way. It was a miracle that God worked in her womb and made a baby for him to dwell in for 30 some odd years on this earth. And he was experienced everything like we do. He's aware of everything we go through. But I guess the only way that he could really know that is to come and walk as a man. But he was still God, a spirit. That's why the Bible said that he gave up the ghost. In other words, the spirit came out and the flesh died. The spirit overshadowed Mary she conceived. Praise the Lord. So we're living in a spiritual world. Come on. The instruments of our warfare are not carnal but spiritual to tear down the stronghold of the enemy. I want to, if well, turn to the book of Psalms tonight. 34th chapter. I'm getting short sure winded and I ain't got, I can't read a lot of this. But in the 34th chapter, and the 7th verse, um, I want you to take your hand and reach out. You feel anything? You can't, you didn't feel nothing, did you? Come on, brother. Now I have lifted my hands up. I begin to feel something come through my hands and down into my body and saturate my soul come on. with the glory of God. Jesus, Jesus. Somebody was talking about earlier this evening about how when you don't feel nothing. 
That's why it's important to know the Word of God. When Jesus was tempted, He used the Word on the enemy. He didn't get up there and cut him a jig and speak in tongues and run the back of the pews and one thing and the other. And I'm going to say this tonight, and please don't take it the wrong way. I love you with all my heart. But if you only have a shout, you have a shallow experience. Because there are times that when you experience the shout in a good time here, and you go out that door, you're going to face a real enemy that is out to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Praise the Lord, he's after you with everything he's got. Because he knows he does not have much time. Now, praise the Lord. Get my eyes to focus and help. Praise the Lord. I guess I need to be put out in the pasture here. Yeah. Uh, here in the seventh verse of the 34th chapter, it said, And the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him. Now, when it's talking about the angel of the Lord, whenever you read that phrase of the angel, of the Lord in Captain. Friends, it's talking about the Lord Himself. It's the Spirit of God. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear Him and deliver them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Him. Praise the Lord. O oh, fear the Lord. Ye his saints, for as there is no want to them that fear him. Now the Bible says the very beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Now the Bible don't contradicts itself. When you're talking about two different subjects, you need to rightly divide them. He said that God did not give you a spirit of fear. Praise the Lord, but of faith and of a sound mind. But then here he said, oh, fear of the Lord. Well, I love my daddy. Well, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Paul said that them that love to chastise. So I think I'd be right in saying that a fear of the Lord is to give reverence to God's will. Praise the Lord. But He didn't give you a fear. You don't have to go around all the time. You don't have to dread being beat by Him. Uh, uh, Brother Guy used to say, well, I reckon I go to church tonight get my beat. When I told him, I said, brother, I'm going to tell you the truth. If all I went to the house of God for is to get beat, if you ain't doing nothing wrong, you ain't got nothing to worry about. And if you have, repent of it, and you'll be all right. Praise the Lord. You know, we need to recognize the adversary when he comes at us. But everything that happens to us that's bad is not the devil. Job said that cannot I receive good at the hand of the Lord and not receive bad? He lost ten head of youngins, lost all of his uh, livestock, his buildings was destroyed, his health was bad. And every way he turned, it seemed like 
But his poor wife felt sorry for him. And she said, why don't you just curse God and die? But he had something down inside him. It ain't no fun to have a low-grade fever and be sick. It ain't no fun to lose a loved one, much less ten of them at one time. One day you filthy rich, and the next day you as poor as you can be. But God's still God. God's still on the throne. Now, it's said to marvel not that the spirits are subject to you. They went away and they came to the Lord and they were excited because the spirits were subject to them. Now, did you know tonight that the spirits or the spirit of Satan is subject to you? You know, it gets back to faith without wavering. If God quickens you and assures you of something, do not lose your faith and your confidence that God is faithful. Amen. He specializes in doing the impossible. Praise the Lord. So there's spirits out there that I ask you to raise your hand out a while ago. According to the Word of God, you just run your arm right through an angel. Some of you probably sat down on one if it didn't slip over. Oh, Brother Ray, you talking about a bunch of foolishness. No, friend, I'm talking about the Word of God. Praise the Lord. You know, I, I have to tell you the truth. That sometimes you're better off to be confined where the Lord can talk to you than you are to be where you run. But the scariest I've ever been in my life is I was driving down Highway 29 and I was praying and all of a sudden I got chill bumps on my goosebumps. Hair on my neck I could feel it rising up. And on my arms, and I, I was aware that there was something in the back seat. And while I was praying, and, I, and I, I wanted to look, but you know what? I couldn't make myself look in that back seat. I had a rear, rear view mirror. But I don't think I've seen nothing if I looked. Because you don't see spirits. Praise the Lord. Now there were spirits of the enemy. Our legion had 200 spirits in him. Demons. Well, it's all those demons was in him. The Bible said he ran through the graveyard naked. Huh. That reminds me of a lot of people today. Ain't got sense enough to wear some clothes. Amen. But I don't know whether it's a lack of intelligence or there's a spirit got a hold of them and they don't recognize it. Come on. And I think it's the latter part. We have people today that Satan is using and we're not comprehending what's going on. I read to you last Sunday night where it said that there was spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. I touched on some of those things and, and I want to tell you tonight the enemy might come in at us as a flood. Come on. But the spirit 
of the Lord will raise up a standard yes. against him. Yes. What is a standard? Bam. It's a fence. It's a barrier. You've come so far, but you can't go no farther. That's right. So, tonight we have authority. Acts 1 and 8 said, after that you have uh, the, see the Holy Ghost talked about the power that we have. Said you shall be my witnesses. Come on. It ain't a matter of talking to talk. James said, be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. It's a matter of walking the walk. But we're so preoccupied with other things that we'll let the devil beat us around over and over again and fail to grab hold of the reality that we're fighting a spiritual warfare. And I'm going to tell you, I don't want to fight against God. Praise the Lord. Who do you think made the storm? And they looked out over the water and they seen Jesus coming. Why do you think they thought they seen the ghost? Because that's what they seen. The Lord let them see him. Thank you, Lord. And he walked on the water. Come on. That was a problem for the Lord. But he, Peter said, If it be thy Lord, bid me to come unto thee. Yes. And the Lord didn't argue. He said, Come on. Peter had enough faith to step out in faith. Now, I'm going to say something tonight. Please grab this. It ain't a matter if God can do something. Okay? Everybody believes that God can do anything. A man told me one time, said, uh, You say God can do anything? I said, yeah. He can do anything but fail his people. He said, well, what's the most outlandish thing you think God can do? And I said, he can grow hair on a doorknob if he wants to. But he must have thought Joe Ed was a doorknob. <laughs> he chose not to put no hair on it. But I, I was thinking about the spiritual element of it. Now, if we we'll think about we're fighting spirits, we're fighting an enemy that we can't see. So you're not going to be able to beat him with your natural means. It is not a mind over matter. Well, I try to believe. The Lord told Tom, I said, you believe because you have seen. But he said, blessed are they which believe, yet they have not seen. Now, I had some people tell me one time that they were in the service and this prophet come along And he said, I'm going to show you the power that I have with God. And he said, you see that chandelier? He began to do his finger like that. That chandelier began to move back and forth. Now, the scripture says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits to see whether they be of God. I've seen some good Holy Ghost filled saints of God because they didn't try the spirits. Got right in with witchcraft and had no idea what they were playing with. Praise the Lord. 
So we're living and breathing in this natural world for the moment. But one day we're going to give up our ghost. And we're going to be with the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But we give the devil so much credit. I said the Lord will not give his honor and his glory to another. He won't let me, he won't let you, won't let nobody else. He sure won't let the devil. But now it talks about the spirits are subject unto us. <laughs> Imagine at midnight to Sister Kathy was at the house by herself. Bad weather had come up. Do you know a storm can be a boogerish thing? Storms in our life can be awful booze. We, we don't know what we're going to do. That's why we can't lean on the arm of flesh. But come to the throne of grace boldly. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, think about this for a minute. It said the spirits are subject to us. It didn't say good nor bad. So I'm going to tell you tonight, it said spirits, those angels have been kept around about you. I feel like every one of us from time to time has prayed for our children and asked God to put an angel in the car with them. Keep them. Protect them. I'll never forget the time I got off of work, left the nuclear plant, I come down 56, come out of Cedar Crossing, come down there on that bad curve on 56. I was driving dead into the sun and I couldn't see nothing. So I kept walking over to the edge of the road till I could feel my front tire off the road. And I know that I just told it that I'd be all right. But then I heard a noise. And just as I pulled around the curve, I looked at my rear view mirror. And now FPE, a Federal Pacific Electric truck, they were white, went by me like a streak of lightning. And after that was over, I realized that my car had went against the centrifugal force that should have put me across the center line in front of the truck. But it didn't. It put me off on the shoulder of the road. Jesus. Now you can attribute that to a lot of things. I thank God for taking care of me. Yeah. I was on elevation 134 at the nuclear plant. And I fell over like that. No, I'm not imagining things. I'm not crazy. But it was like I fell into an airbag. I was flapping my arms like an old buzzer trying to run and get off the ground. But it wasn't doing no good. And all of a sudden, I just started straightening my valve. And I got my balance back. I was on the scaffold. There have been times in your life that you couldn't keep yourself, but there was an unseen hand directing your path and enable you to make it. Thank you, Lord. So, He to whom we yield our members to, He is our Master. Yes. I don't know about you, but I want to serve God, don't you? Yes. There's such a wonderful benefit in serving God. He's going to be with us through this life. He's made provision for us. I remember one time my mom-in-law came. She filled our cabinets and our freezer up with food. And I thought about a thing. I asked Christy, I said, baby, 
How'd she know we didn't have no groceries? I don't know. I don't know a lot of things. But I do know this. If I yield myself to the will of God, and if I walk in the Spirit, I won't be walking away from God. But I have got to know the Spirit that I'm walking in. Jesus said in closing, you will know my voice. And another you will not follow. Amen. There are two voices to follow tonight. And we want to follow the one that leads us straight to heaven, don't we? True. Praise the Lord. I want you to stand with me. Lord, have mercy. There are states tonight that you can go to Walmarts. You can go to the fitness center. Or you can go to the casino. But you can't go to church. I tell you the spiritual state we got in. But if we'll be on our P's and Q's, I know that we got to follow after the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. They can't take our joy. That's right. They can't take our peace. Thank you, Lord. But I tell you what we can do, we can lay it down without a fight. Praise the Lord. So, when it talks about wrestling, Remember something, it's up to you whether you're willing to fight. Right. Anything's worth having is worth fighting for. Yes, Lord. Now, I'm not talking about getting a gun or machete or axe handle. I'm talking about getting the shield of the Spirit, the helmet of the faith, yes. sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Thank Have you. our feet shod with the preparation of peace. Our loins girt about, amen, with truth. So tonight, let's pray one for another. Lord, we do know, God, that you're able to keep...